Exercise number three, dynamic stretch for the psoas muscle and the anterior muscles across the front here. So this is a similar premise in that we're trying to get some dynamic stretch into the muscle. Your psoas muscle for a professional cyclist um, and for any amateur cyclist out there, it's really the center of your world. Really, If you can get good psoas function, you can really help to improve your lower back stability and help your stability on the bike. So getting some activation into these muscles before we go out and ride our bikes, this can be very important too. So the same thing as before in terms of the dynamic stretch. At this time, you can take a semi-lunge step forward and as you come down, you reach your arms up as high as possible and you're gonna alternate steps going forwards. A few key things to remember when you're doing this is, as you take your lunge step forward, you don't want your front knee coming anywhere past your toes. As soon as your knee starts to come past your toes, you're gonna put a lot of pressure in the anterior knee and overload the stress, um, the ligaments and the tendons in your knee, which we don't want to do. So that, be mindful of when we're doing that. The second thing is, as you come down and you reach up, try and reach, make sure you're reaching up as high as you can. As you do that, you're gonna to start to feel that stretch knee. here across the front of that region where the psoas falls down into there. So, away we go and reach up. Good, good. Again, keep your eyes fixed in front of you. That's fine. Okay, let's spin around, let's do it again. As you get better, you'll start to be able to do this in one motion rather than two. That's good. Keep your knee behind your toes. Perfect. So that's a dynamic stretch for your psoas muscle. Ready? Okay. So the fourth exercise, Again, these are all simple exercises you can use. They're very low tech. All you need is a little bit of time and a little bit of space. So there's no excuses not to be doing these exercises before you ride, because they will make a difference. So the fourth exercise is to try and warm up your core muscles. It helps to warm up your glutes, helps to warm up your psoas muscle, helps to warm up your, um, your abdomen muscles in here as well, as well as your low back muscles. So this exercise, if you're new to it, you want to start with your legs ever so slightly wider than, um, wider than your shoulders. Keep your lumbar spine in neutral as you fold forwards. You're gonna hinge at your hips because it's important to keep your lumbar spine in neutral so you're not folding from the lumbar spine like that. So keep your hinge at your hips, let your arms drop forward just as they're about to reach the floor and then you just fall forwards onto your hands, keeping your legs straight. As you do that, you're gonna walk forward with your hands like so, all the time engaging your core muscles and as, as you get to here, you're gonna walk your hands up and then you're gonna proceed and do the same thing again. All right, so let's have a go at doing that. Start with your legs nice and wide if you're new to doing this. If you're a bit more familiar with it, and to make it more difficult, you can bring your legs a little bit closer together. So, lumbar spine in neutral, away you go. Okay. So, try and get your feet as close to your hands as possible. There you go, and then walk your hands out. Rather than falling your arms out in front of you, try and keep your hands, there you go, from there. Walk out as far as you can, always engaging your core. It's really important to keep that lumbar spine in neutral also. So as you do it this time, as you come back, rather than falling out with your hands in front of you and wrist, yeah, chances so. of damaging your wrist before you've even got on your bike, fold forwards, that's it, nice and slowly and controlled. Walk out, hold it at the end there for two or three seconds and walk out again nice and slowly. You just start to get those muscles fired up and burning in here in your glutes also. Keep coming forward your feet as far as you can. That's good and up you go. So if Dan is familiar with doing these exercises, he can do, you wouldn't know it. You could, you could start with your legs a little bit closer and this is gonna make it all that much more harder for your, um, for your glutes and your, your lumbar spine and your low back muscles as well. Okay, so that's the fourth exercise. That's to get some activation into your core muscles before you get on the bike. Put these four exercises together, take you the best part of three or four minutes that means your body is ever so slightly ready, prepared, the key muscles for cycling are ready to go. So when you climb on your bike, you've got a, you've got a good chance of getting the most out of it. Anything to add? Oh, I tighten here. <laughs> so no. Always you can, keep yourself, keep your eyes fixed on something in the distance to keep your body as tall as possible. Always remember to engage your core the whole time. Come up high, and again, come up high. 